Assalamu alaikum welcome back to another video with Hasna Snatmi we were discussing the femur bone in the previous video we've already discussed the site determination and anatomical position in case you haven't seen then you can check it out in my femur playlist so let's go ahead and begin the bony features of the femur now for easier understanding and a better outlook on the femur i have decided to teach you the femur in three separate parts as i already mentioned it is divided into an upper end a shaft and a lower end. In this specific video, we'll discuss the upper end along with its attachments. So the upper end consists of the head, which is completely rounded, the neck, and finally, the area of the shaft, which is made into prominences. This is the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter. Now the trochanters anteriorly are lesser visible. However, when I turn it posteriorly you can see them better this is the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter this is anteriorly so anteriorly if you see that between the two trochanters the greater and the lesser trochanter passes a line this is known as the intertrochanteric line passing anterior to the shaft between the two trochanters where the neck is meeting your shaft and posteriorly where the neck meets the shaft is a more prominent ridge between the two trochanters known as the intertrochanteric crest. So these were the main important bony features of the upper end of the femur. Now let's discuss them separately. The head is rounded, it forms more than half a sphere. It is rounded to make a joint with the hip bone in the part of acetabulum to form the hip joint. The rounded head consists of a, you can say, a pit just below its center. This pit is known as the fovea. Now, what is the significance of the fovea? On the fovea, there is attachment to the ligamentum teres femoris, also known as the round ligament of the head of femur or the ligament of the head of femur. So, this ligament carries your foveolar artery, which is the main blood supply of the head of the femur that we'll discuss later. So remember that there is a fovea in the middle of the head just below. It's a pit that has the ligamentum teres or the round ligament of the head of femur. Apart from this now let's talk about the neck of the femur. The neck of the femur is basically obviously going to be intracapsular meaning it is mostly inside the hip joint covered by the capsular ligament. So anteriorly the neck is completely intracapsular. However, posteriorly, most of its medial half is intracapsular, but about some part is also extracapsular. So the neck basically consists of an upper border, a lower border, an anterior surface, a posterior surface. So where the anterior surface of the neck is meeting the shaft anteriorly, I mentioned earlier, it is known as the intertrochanteric line. And posteriorly, where the posterior surface of the neck is meeting with the shaft of femur, this is a prominent ridge known as the intertrochanteric crest. Now let's talk about the trochanters. So this is the greater trochanter and this is the lesser trochanter, more visible posteriorly, so I'll look behind, all right? So the uh, lesser trochanter is uh, smaller prominence, whereas the Greater trochanter is a larger prominence. Now, what is important with the greater trochanter is basically that it is made up of a couple of parts. The trochanter is formed by the following parts. It has an apex, an anterior surface, a lateral surface, and finally, a medial surface. So, the medial surface of the greater trochanter is very peculiar as it has a small rough impression in its anterior part. And more posteriorly, as you can see, it is carrying a fossa. Now, this is a hole in the medial surface. This is known as the intertrochanteric fossa. It is very important because the ten important tendon is going to be attached here. So overall now, let's talk about the attachments. The most important attachments include the attachments of the various surfaces of the greater trochanter. The apex that we talked about gives attachment to the piriformis muscle. Anterior surface gives attachment to the gluteus minimus muscle. The lateral surface gives attachment to the gluteus medius muscle and the medial surface of your greater trochanter in its rough part, it is giving attachment to the obturator internus and the two jamili muscles, the superior and inferior jamili muscles. The trochanteric fossa is going to give attachment to your obturator external tendon. So that is why intertrochanteric fossa is important here. The obturator 
externus tendon is going to be attached. The lesser trochanter carries the psoas major and iliacus muscles. The psoas major is attached here while iliacus is more on its base. Moreover, the intertrochanteric line which lies anteriorly is going to be giving attachment to most of the capsular ligament or the capsule of the hip joint along with the iliofemoral ligament meaning the ilium bone of the hip will be linked up to the femur via the iliofemoral ligament which will be attached on the intertrochanteric line. And finally, posteriorly we talked about the intertrochanteric crest. The intertrochanteric crest in its medial part has a very prominent tubercle. This is known as the quadrate tubercle. The quadrate tubercle carries significance that it gives the attachment to the quadratus femoris. So overall, you can say the mnemonic for the greater trochanter attachments is the M pi M. M for the gluteus minimus, P for the piriformis at the apex, I for the obturator internus at the medial surface along with the two gemelli. E for the externus or obturator externus in the intertrochanteric fossa and finally the final M is for the gluteus medius in the lateral surface of your greater trochanter. Apart from that the psoas major iliacus on the lesser trochanter and the quadrate tubercle carries your quadratus femoris. These were the most important attachments of the upper end. The upper end makes angle with the shaft of the femur known as the neck shaft angle which is 125 degrees in a normal person. However, in females it is going to be lesser than 125 degrees because the females have a more wider pelvis. Apart from this, there is another angle known as the angle of femoral torsion. The angle of femoral torsion is basically an angle which is comparing the transverse axis of the upper end with the transverse axis of the lower end. The angle of femoral torsion is about 15 degrees. In the next video, we will talk about the shaft. Thank you so much for watching.